Hello! Welcome! I am so glad you're here tonight because we're going to talk about how we can take advantage of all the summer produce. Okay, we're going to talk about farmer's markets and your grocery store. And we're going to talk about washing it and making it last longer and how we can incorporate all the yumminess that is about to be, you know, abundant upon us to make our meals like good and exciting. So I'm I am hope you're buckled up because we're going to have fun. And I want you to be like totally going crazy in the chat because I want your opinions as well, because I am not a professional and anything other than eating i can eat very well yes so um so i definitely want your tips and tricks and what works for you because certain areas of the country and with here on youtube all over the world um there's tips and tricks that you have on how you store things like i live in utah so i live in a very dry climate so like my bread doesn't mold quite as fast um there's Things that I noticed that I could keep out on the counter versus putting in the refrigerator to stretch longer. So I want to know what works for you with these tips. All right. So summer produce. So it is June and I can't believe it's already the 21st of June. Holy cow. This month has flown by. So for June, um, we are going to start seeing things like pineapple right now. Watch out for sales. In fact, Derek, will you grab in the printer um, the sale brochure I printed up, please? So I've been keeping an eye on the sales, the grocery store ads, and uh, and even a place called Alpine Food Storage where they get things from um, markets and things in bulk. And um, they have a lot more than what they advertise online. So I'll go and I'll pull up like my store apps on my phone and compare prices because uh, not all places are near each other in the price range. So uh, first off, like right now, pineapple is really good. I would love to know in the chat, what are you seeing for prices for pineapple in your area? Uh, I just saw, mm, wasn't looking good, but it was Macy's. So Macy's in my area. It's a, um, it used to be associate foods, but now it's like a food club store. They wanted like two sixty nine dollars for a pineapple. Yikes. So some stores, the prices aren't great, but they're the fruit and produce fruits and vegetables are in season. And this is when you want to snag them, come home and work with them quickly. Like your berries, you're going to want to work with them very, very quickly. Um, especially if you're going to be doing jams and things, um, they spoil super fast. So you can freeze things, you can freeze dry, dehydrate. Um, we like to freeze dry. We do have a dehydrator, but we have fallen in love with freeze drying. Those are raspberries. Yum. Um, okay. So pineapple right now, again, I would love to see how much it is in your area. And then um, apricot apricots, apricots, how do you pronounce it? Those are in season and those are so good. Um, they, they're, this is when they're at like the peak of their like sweetness. And so this is when you want to grab like your stone fruit, like later in July is a better time for most stone fruit, like plums, uh, nectarines, peaches. Uh, and that's when you want to grab them. Um, so apricots is a good one. Uh, look for if they are, you can get them when they're hard, keep them out on your counter. Don't put them in your fridge. That way they'll, um, ripen for you, especially if you want to eat them right away. I hate when I'm like craving like nectarines and they're not quite to the point where I can eat them yet. And then what usually happens, you forget about them. And when you go grab them, they're already like gone, but that's okay. I still went right when they're at that point where they could be like, I put them in the freezer. I'll slice them up and throw them in the freezer because you could still use them later. Throw them in a smoothie, right? Okay. So if you like apricots, uh, we like making apricot jelly with it. Uh, I've actually done fruit roll-ups one year when the kids were little with apricots. Uh, you could do an apricot crisp and oat crumble. That sounds amazing. 
you could do, you could add it to your um, salads. You could do an apricot and strawberry smoothie. Um, you could do a summer salad with apricots and poppy seed dressing. I hope you guys have eaten dinner because this is going to make you hungry. Our dinner is finishing thawing in a bowl in the sink. We're going to be grilling up some chicken. So I'm going to be hungry through this whole thing. Uh, in June, avocados. We've seen pretty good prices on avocados right now. Okay, so here is a thing to help stretch avocado. The new tip I just learned with avocados is that you could put them in a bowl of water and stick that in your fridge. Like I saw that on TikTok. Has anyone tried it? Does it work? Will it last the whole thing in a bowl of water in your refrigerator? You got to let me know. Okay, I'm seeing for that pineapple $2.29, $1.99 in Iowa, $1.98 in Aldi. Mm. Okay. Okay, Sarah, that is a great question. Sarah asks, um, if the in-season foods taste like garbage, is it best to buy frozen and hope it's better to try again next year? Yes. I know it really depends on how, where it was grown, the weather, um, when they picked it. Because a lot of the time they are picking things super early. And then um, that way between the process of traveling, then they'll ripen. So it is a hit and miss. But I noticed that I have better luck on fruit stands in the area. Like, I don't know if like where you are, if little farmer market markets do fruit stands, like we have one right on the corner. We're hoping that they're still going to be open after this live. Cause I want to grab some corn. And, um, the, we, we seem to have better luck at local farmers stands where they're like perfect. Uh, and it could be to the store that you're getting at. Okay, so for avocados, you can, if you want them super quick, put them in a brown paper sack and ha just have them out on your counter. You could add another piece of fruit with it to make it ripen quick and like bananas. Bananas ripen things so fast. If you don't want your bananas to ripen quick, then you can wrap it with saran wrap right onto the tip of it. So um, I just, the plastic just came off of these ones. So they're going quickly. So we need to use them up. But then I just heard of a rumor that there's actually a spray that they've been putting on bananas. Like, to what was it? I just saw it on Instagram or TikTok where they actually spray it. It's to, a ripening agent. Yeah, it's a ripening agent. And I'm like, what? So um, the tip was to when you bring your bananas home to even wash the outside of them, then do the wrapping around the top here so it'll last longer okay great now i've got to wash my bananas what the crap are you serious i don't got time for that <laughs> but those are great to just slice up and throw in your freezer oh my goodness yeah bananas will last a long time okay and right now in june beets i'm not a beet person i can't do it. i could do beet jelly derek's grandma's got a really good beet jelly so, but that, you know, that's like sugar and something else. So if you like beets, now's the time to grab them. Uh, you could do uh, roasted beets, uh, roasted beets on, on avocado salad. I just, beets, I'm just, if we had to live off beets to survive, if the world was coming down, I don't know if I could do it. I just don't think I can. No. Um, okay, blueberries all the way through the summer. You've got your blueberries, the Trinity, I call it in uh, the fruits, the berries are the, the raspberries, the strawberries, the blueberries, blackberries are really at their best, like July. Um, here in Utah, there's actually farms further south from us that will let you go pick raspberries and blueberries. That usually is in August. Well, no, that is the end of July. End of July, August. Uh, it just depends on what the weather has done here in Utah. And you could go pick raspberries. So fun. Um, and then, um, and with those, 
wash those as soon as you get home, except for the strawberries. But here's where I want you to put in the chat. With strawberries, I've noticed that if we don't wash them, they'll last longer in the fridge. But then we've had moments where that's not true. And I'm wondering if it's during a certain time of the buying process. But what we have noticed is I bought these um, glass lock containers from, I want to say Costco and just recently. And we have been washing the strawberries, hauling them and getting them all good and clean. And then we'll put a piece of paper towel down in here. And I've done this with all my other containers that are plastic, but for some reason, I'm telling you the glass containers have made our strawberries stretch. Now you can do where, um, you could seal up your jars like this in your refrigerator and put your strawberries in them, um, with that air thing. I was trying to find it for you guys and I misplaced it. I don't know where I put it that I've done and it has worked, but I am telling you something about this container, this glass container, they have stayed so cold and just like they got, they seem to have gotten harder. Did you notice that Derek with the container, the glass container, the, how the, how cold they were and like hard. It's weird. Like they were, nice. they were perfect and they lasted so much longer. So if you have, don't have glass containers and you know, want to, I just washed these. So these are going to like, leak all over the place but i just washed these so i'm gonna do that with these in the glass container but i'm noticing um i've been testing different containers and i might just be moving over for my refrigerator all glass because the produce has been doing amazing in glass containers so paper yeah paper towel at the bottom yep raspberries with vinegar uh Yep. So I'm loving that. Yeah. I'll wash them with, with some white vinegar. Um, and I've done the baking soda trick as well. And they come out really good. The key though, before you put them back in your refrigerator with any of the berries is to dry them and dry them good. Moisture is not their friend. So we'll lay out a towel and lay them out. And, um, in fact, Derek is so precise. He puts his raspberries upside down. I've noticed that about you, Derek. I've got issues. <laughs> You've got issues, but it makes it last longer. So taking that step to have them dry, then put the paper towel with the container in the refrigerator and they do great. Okay. So, um, carrots are in season right now. Uh, I love carrots. I love, um, I like, I don't buy the baby carrots anymore. Uh, one, I heard like how they keep them. I don't know. There's like chlorine on the outside of them. I don't know. And, and they always have that slimy feeling. So I always buy the good old big bag from the bulk store, uh, just carrots, straight up good old carrot. And they taste better. They just, they taste fresher. And um, once they're in the fridge and they're starting to like get a little, not furry. Do you know what I mean? Like they get these weird little spikes of hair. We'll peel them, we'll chop them up and we'll put them in the containers. And that way we have easy access to them. And if they're in strips, then if I use them in a recipe, I just have to hurry and just do a quick chop. I don't have to peel them again. So yeah, the key is getting them ready for the refrigerator. Um, that way when you want to snack or cook, um, this is where I know we get so tired when we get back from the store. I do. I get wiped out when I go grocery shopping. And when I come home, it's sometimes they get prepped and ready to go. And there's times not and we're hurrying and eating them. But I'm telling you, if we could take a few steps in getting these things prepped to last long, you're going to save so much money. Okay. Uh, cherries. Uh, I'm still not seeing good prices on cherries right now, um, but they're in season. But yeah, you can buy them frozen and pop them in your freezer. So that way, because they're, they're flash frozen. And so anything in the grocery store, like frozen is good, guys. I know there's a lot of people that turn their nose up to it, but they get frozen at their peakness. And so your, your minerals and your vitamins are all there. Just don't overcook them. Like my mom, 
She cooks broccoli until it's dead. Like, dead. I love it. She's like, oh, but that's how she likes it. Okay, red cherries at Smith's, is, they're $4.99 a pound. And it's not happening. Here in Utah, though, cherries, July. That's when they do the the, the pit, the, the spit pit challenge or something like that down south from us. And so that's when we start seeing a better deal is in um, July. So I'm definitely not getting cherries, even though I've been craving them. Um, and cherries are so great. that um, They're so good to work with. Like, pit them. yes, you stain your hands, but get a cherry pitter. Uh, you could freeze them. You can even make a cherry pie filling before you freeze them. I'm gonna actually going to be sharing this within the next couple of weeks where I'm going to be making some blueberry pie filling, cherry pie filling. Instead of using the canned, how you can make it and thicken it and then put it in the freezer, you know, add it to a jar um, and put it in the freezer and, and use later. Or you can can it. Um, so that's what I want to do because I'm really trying to stay away from like I'm really trying to make my own things and not run to the store. Um, so the, and then corn, oh my gosh, corn. I can't get enough of corn. I froze a lot of corn last summer. If you saw those videos, uh, I have them actually in the description box right now. And I froze a ton of corn. We freeze dried corn. Um, and I have in my freezer, the corn stalks like the I chopped the corn off of it it's not a husk the husk is the green part the cob thank you Derek so I have them in the freezer because I'm going to make like depression honey so it's basically you're making a corn syrup and so I'm going to be sharing that um and so that was like the depression honey back in the depression days uh cucumbers okay so With cucumbers, I noticed a few things, and I've been testing it out the last few weeks. Depending on the ones that I picked and when they were picked and brought to the store, I noticed that like with my mini cucumbers that I get from Sam's Club or Costco, they do better sitting outside on the counter for a few days than get put into the refrigerator. It's really weird. I've been like testing that out here, but I live in Utah, so this is like... I'm going off of Utah things. Um, so you want to choose dark green and, of course, firm. And then um, if you want to do pickle, there's certain types. Like I know certain pickles do better than others. Um, and there's names for them, and I didn't write them down. I know what they look like. But I love cucumbers. I can eat those all the live long day. Are you kidding me? Um so if you want your cucumbers to last a little bit longer, you can put water in the container with them. Um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But I noticed that if I keep it like in here with a paper towel, um, there's something about this glass. It just gets them nice and cold. We're going to talk about storing too. Um, there's eggplant if you like eggplant. I love eggplant, but I don't store eggplant, um, not even long term with our freeze dryer because I'm the only one who eats eggplant. I love eggplant, but I eat it the naughty way. I like to fry my eggplant. So that's what, how I grew up eating it. But it's super versatile. I mean, you could put it in your baking. You could put it in your um, your stir fries. Uh, so those have to definitely be like good and firm, haven't hard because those spoil so so quick um those i keep in the refrigerator before you know before i go to use them those i do not sit out um figs if you like figs i'm i like figs but i yeah i'm not like someone's got to work with them for me i i get really wigged out with figs because i'm like you know, it's like a big raisin. I'm like, is it spoiled? Is it moldy inside? I just, it kind of freaks me out. Um, figs do. I don't know. What do you guys feel about figs? So yikes. Uh, grapes. Oh my goodness. Okay. So right now Smith's has grapes starting today for 99 cents a pound. I'm going to the store tomorrow morning 
and uh, 99 cents a pound. I am definitely going. Is The picture is showing green grapes, but I'm sure it's the red grapes as well. So I'll be grabbing some to pop in the freezer. You guys wash them up, throw them in a Ziploc bag. You don't have to worry about drying them. They're not going to stick together. Throw that bag in your freezer. You have a nice cool treat. Oh, so good. We tried, um, was it last year? We tried to freeze dry grapes. And that was a tough one for us. That we really stunk at that one, huh, Derek? We're going to keep trying though. We're going to keep trying. Um, oh, and strawberries at Smith's, they're advertising $2.49 a pound. Yeah, no, that to me is not good. Uh, the Red Barn down uh, south from us, they just did pallets of uh, strawberries for a dollar a pound. And they did now, I think they're advertising $1.50 a pound. So if they are still that price this weekend, I might actually run down and grab some because I want to make our own strawberry jelly. Uh, our kids love that and just make our own instead of buying it. Um, and, and if I don't have time to make the jam or jelly, you can freeze them and make the jam and jelly later. So don't be afraid to freeze things. You can work with everything again later. And if you do freeze drying, it's actually good if everything's already frozen before you freeze dry it. So, okay, let, let me see if I missed anything on the sales for the produce. What else? Oh, there was tomatoes. Tomatoes, of course, tomatoes. Um, right now, to, red tomatoes on the vine. Those are my favorite. Um, Smith's has them for 99 cents a pound. Yeah. I'm going to be grabbing me some of those. You can freeze a whole tomato, guys. Like if you just want to use it later to like make sauce with um, and you're not, you know, you really can't just chop up tomatoes and put them in your freezer. They come out mushy. But if you want to use them later for a sauce, you can put the whole tomato. I put them in like Walmart bags, shoved them in my big stand up freezer. And then later in the year, I took them out and I made soups with them. I just threw all these like hard balls of tomatoes, these big rock things into the slow cooker, filled that up as much as I could. And I made tomato sauce from it. And the skins just peel right off and I threw them away. And you could strain it after because it has all the seeds in it. And I had a nice tomato sauce. And from that, you can make ketchup. Uh, you can make a tomato soup. So if I can't get to the tomatoes in time, I just especially canning them. Um, I'll just throw the whole thing straight into the freezer. Don't even take like the twigs off the leaves, like just chuck them in your freezer. So, um, let's see. And I went to the, uh, the stand right by our house to get the corn, but they hadn't had it in yet. And like whoever was delivering it to him hadn't showed up yet. So I should have asked him what the price was. Dang it. Um, I'm not seeing like a phenomenal price yet on corn on the cob. Um, but I will be stocking up and freezing more of it because it's just so like that yummy field corn that's grown here. It just tastes so good. And you're able to capture that later when you have it later in the year. Um, and it's just so good. And you don't have to blanch corn, you guys, like you don't, like one thing with freezing, you don't have to blanch corn. I just chopped it off the cob, threw it in um, Ziploc bags and threw it in my freezer. Or you could do it in a food saver bag and use your food saver machine. And and I've done it before. Um, the links are in the video or down below for you. I took the corn and just cut it in half with the husks still on and put those in the Ziploc bags. And then when I wanted to use it, you could pop it in the microwave and cook it up in the microwave or take it out, let it thaw for a little while, take the, the husks off and throw it in your pot and you're good to go. Do not pre like cook the corn. It's a waste of time. You're yeah. Waste of time. Avocados right now are a dollar 79 each at Smith. Mm, yuck. Um, I noticed that at Sam's club, I have a Sam's club, my cart, uh, I put in my cart what I want to go get at Sam's Club this week. Um, like their mini cucumbers are two pounds for $3.78. That's good. 
Um, and their bananas, three pounds for $1.38. And that ended up being cheaper than what my grocery store is selling bananas for. Do the math, whatever that math is, um, it, it's cheaper. And then their strawberries are two pounds for $3.57. Now that's a good deal, especially if I can't make the drive, which is 40 minutes south. Then you get to like take into effect like your gas and all that. So um, it'll just be better for me to go to Sam's Club. So that's $1.78 a pound. Yeah. So that's on my list um, to go grab. And let's see here. So, I mean, this week, there's not many good produce sales, but a couple that I want to get my hands on. Green beans. Green beans are so good to put in your freezer. Those do need to be blanched um, a little bit. And then, but you can do that again after. I, I've never had an issue when I've just thrown a bag of green beans in the freezer. Um, so th those are really good and you'll see good deals on that. Um, and then your greens, of course, like your your spinaches and your romaines. Uh, right now, our romaine at Sam's Club is $3.28. I'd rather get it at the club stores than the supermarket. Derek and I ran into Macy's um, over the weekend and we bought two bags of romaine for like three something a bag and they had three heads in there and they weren't that big. So I was like, <gasps> yeah, wasn't happy. I'm like, I got to get to Sam's club. Um, of course, like your limes um, that you can snag. Those work really good in the freezer. You can use, you can wedge them up or slice them thin and use them later in your waters. Um, the, Limes are in season. Mangoes. Okay. When you see the deals on mango, snag those. Um, last year we freeze dried mango and they were like eating candy. They were so good. But take the mangoes, slice them up, um, put them on a sheet pan with some parchment paper, pop them in your freezer. So good. Um, of course, starting in July, you're going to see nectarines and peaches yeah, I go crazy when it comes to those. Um, I love nectarines, love a good nectarine, but the peaches we start slicing and putting in the freezer to have for later, especially come the holidays when we want um, like peach pie, peach crisp. Uh, I do have videos that I link down below where I share my peach crisp recipe. It is so good. In fact, now I'm craving it. Yum, 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 yum. Um, okay, so... Ellie is saying romaine hearts three heads is 285. Organic is 391. That's good. 291. Yeah, I haven't seen romaine. Um the one store may had it for a dollar something, but they didn't look good because they had to push them out. So look and if it's too good to be true, it could be too good to be true. Um because they have to push things out. Peppers, you're going to see a ton of peppers. Uh, we end up buying a lot of peppers come August. We'll grab Anaheim peppers, jalapenos, uh, chop them up, throw them in your freezer. We like having Anaheim peppers, like stuffing them with cheese. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Put that on the grill. Yum. Of course, your plums. I've made plum jelly before. So good. Uh, I actually left that video for you in the description box as well. Um, plum jelly works really good. And then if you make, um, and you can juice these fruits too, you guys, and freeze the juice and work with the juice later to make your jellies and jams if you don't have the time now. So we used to do that with a grapevine we had um, at our old house. And it would produce a lot of grapes. And what I would do is um, we had a juicing thing on the stove. I don't know what you call it, but we would juice them and then can the juice and then put it on the shelf because if there wasn't time to make jellies, I could do it later on. So, um, and then there's radishes. Uh, I have gotten into radishes in my adult age. I actually quite enjoy 
now having them just like grabbing one and chomping on it before it was like only salads but now i like eating radishes um those are great to add you know for snacking in your salads and then there's other varieties of radishes but i haven't explored all the different kinds of radishes but you can make radish chips um with those um you can roast them make do like a garlicky roasted radish yum um rhubarb oh my goodness i used to love snacking on rhubarb as a kid my neighbor's yard had wild just rhubarb grew like crazy and i would just go and just snack on it i love rhubarb um that i end up getting most of the time just frozen we don't work with a lot of rhubarb but um i'll just buy it frozen and then uh, zucchini, like crazy. All your like summer squashes um, and zucchini, you can do a ton with zucchini. If you can dehydrate it uh, and use it later, you can use it in breads, um, your soups, your stews. I have a video down below how I, um, uh, what do they call it? Like the, what's the word? When you, <laughs> you boil it. Um, blanching, that's the word. I did that with um, with this zucchini. Um, I'm kind of like, like a rebel. I, I kind of skip the blanching process on most things. It's, it's up to you. Some things I know you need to, like potatoes. If you want to throw them in the freezer, you have to blanch potatoes or they're going to go black on you. Um, but there's so much more that's in season right now, guys. Like bok choy and then broccoli um and cauliflower leeks onions like onion galore i love onions are you kidding um and let's see my oh papaya if you like papaya okra if you're from the south i'm not a fan of okra i've tried it and i keep trying it but i'm not a fan um but yeah okra and then of course bananas um right now that it's not a co-op but that alpine food storage has ripe bananas nine dollars for 40 pounds they have their sweet corn for five dollars a dozen and their great tomatoes for a dollar a pound and they have flamingo pears pears end up going um the end of summer um they i've never heard of a flamingo pear a dollar a pound and they have key limes a dollar 25 a pound uh and navel oranges they have them for 35 dollars a case and then their yellow onions are 16 dollars for 50 pounds so i just do my homework like i'll collect that information i'll do my homework i'll um grab my price book this is the No Before You Go price book. This is on our website um, at she'sinheraprin.com. And this is how I track all these good deals, you guys. Um, so I will track the prices uh, of my vegetables, even in the summer. And even though it goes up and down, I will track the prices. And then, um, uh, and then all my go-to like condiments and burgers and hot dogs and bacons, like anything that we use during the summertime. Um, of course I track everything, but all my go-to items I track that way I can see the deal. So if I could throw this into my purse, but if I don't have my purse, I bring up the store ads and I compare them, but I have like got these prices in my head now, like things I know I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not going to buy it for that price. Uh, and I track it all. There are 37 categories that you can track to know if you're going to get a good deal. And it really helps you see when you're looking at these sale flyers at your store and you're checking out the front pages where the front page is the best deal. Um, I could see if a sale really is a sale because I have tracked the prices. You could do this once a quarter. Um, that's what I do. I just... If I'm in there, I'll switch up the price, but it doesn't jump too crazy. But I can see like if it's a sale. Um, so the strawberries, like yeah, two forty nine a pound. No, 
that is not a deal to me like not in the least no and it's interesting because <laughs> they've been that price for a while and they have a big deal sticker next to it that's the thing you guys they think they're getting you like big deal like i don't you're not gonna be able to see but they've got this like right here big deal no it's not no it's not Nope, because you can get it cheaper somewhere else. And right now that somewhere else is Sam's Club for the strawberries. So I'm going there tomorrow to get my strawberries. Uh, earlier in the month of June, uh, Walmart strawberries were 224 pounds. Um, and Winco was $1.98. They won during that time. Unless you wanted to take the drive down to... Um, down to the barn but okay so but this deal right now at sam's club for the two pounds three dollars and 57 cents so it comes to what, what did i say a dollar 78 a pound that's really good because um their price the beginning of the month was 428 for the two pound so it's gone down in price at sam's and that's the better price and so i already knew looking online that that i was gonna go get it but glancing at my price book i'm like oh yeah that's better than what they had at the beginning of the month. So you know when you're getting a good deal by tracking your prices. So I'm sure Derek's been leaving the link. If you'd like to go check it out, we have that there for you. Um, so that's how I'm able to catch a deal, know when a deal is a deal, and save. Um, so I recently did put a video out. My last video the on the thumbnail it says huge savings, my 10 tips on grocery shopping. You guys... I don't know if you watched that video, but in that video, I'm at my computer looking at the ads with you, showing you exactly what I do, looking at the ads. And you can see the ads on the screen. So if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. Okay, so now it's like, okay, we we, we know it's in season. Uh, great. But like, how do you know if you're, how can you keep it fresh longer, right? Well, one, you, you kind of have to have a plan. Like, you know, are you going to have the berries for breakfast? Are you going to throw them on a salad? Like, what is your plan when you go grocery shopping? Now, there's times when I know a lot of us just will, you know, do whatever and we'll, we'll just go with the flow, which is totally fine. But I think in able to go with the flow, you need to know, like, the recipes you're going to use them for, right? Uh, Ellie says one pound of strawberries here for $1.54. That's, that's a good price. That's is a good price. Uh, so have an idea of what your recipes will be for it. Um, or else you're going to be doing a lot of snacking. Um, so wash them. Now there's some tips that I found. And I, again, I really think it depends on your, where you are in the neck of the woods. Um, like some fruits and vegetables need to be cleaned right before, well, anything should be cleaned before you eat it. I mean, everything is sprayed, but, um, but they say, you know, with your berries, wash them before you eat them. I will have to say that is true to a point. It depends on how you bought them and when you bought them. Um, but like I said, with the glass containers, they last longer. So I'll, we will wash them. Um, so wash your avocados, your apples, uh, your melons. I think a lot of time people forget to wash the outside of their watermelons and their cantaloupes. I know it's a pain, but wash them. Um, celery, bell peppers, radishes, of course your lettuce. And we love storing the lettuce in these jars. It stretches them for weeks, you guys. I'll put a little paper towel. I'll try to dry them really good after I wash them, get them in the jars, and then seal up the jars. So on, I will link um, that sucky thing. <laughs> my gosh. I don't know where we put it. It's somewhere around here. Um, and my, my romaine will last for a long time, like weeks, like crispy. So I'll chop some up for salads for later. And then I will keep long stalks um, or half of that stock in the jar so I can add them to my burgers, to the sandwiches. So... But it does work. It does have them last longer. Um, okay, so you can wash your veggies uh, 
And if you have a store wash that you like, that's great. I haven't found one that I like. Um, I like the good old vinegar, baking soda. You could do apple cider vinegar. Um, and just let them soak for about five minutes and then rinse them really good and dry them. That's the key is keeping them dry. Um, so, yeah, if you have your own, like, homemade wash, I would love to know. Okay, so a ventilated container uh, or plastic bin for berries, greens, eggplant, lettuce, mushrooms, and snap peas. But I will say with mushrooms, if you want them to last, when you take them home, don't wash them until you need them, okay? Put them in a brown paper bag and put that paper bag in the fridge. I don't know where I found this tip, but it works. And my ma my mushrooms don't go mushy. So I take them out of the container that they're in, you know, with the plastic on top, throw them in the brown paper bag, you know, just roll it up and throw it in the refrigerator. I don't know what the combination is, but it works really good. Um, but yeah, so I, I am a... I've been testing things and I'm moving to glass because I'm noticing things are just doing better. They're staying colder and just lasting longer. Um, and then, um, and then you can like regrow things too. Like you can put your green onions in a cup of water in the refrigerator and get those roots to grow um, down at the bottom. You can regrow your lettuce. I've seen that. Just in water, you don't even need dirt, which is pretty dang cool. Um, gosh. So you could regrow bok choy, cabbage, carrot greens, celery, fennel, garlic, chives. Um, now, I noticed like a lot of the garlic now, they're making it so you can't replant. They, they won't have the things at the end, but you can do that like. I find it interesting, though, with cabbage. Um, you place the root in a shallow bowl of water and watch it regrow from the center. And that's what, exactly what lettuce will do. It'll regrow from the center. So give it a try. You can regrow some of, um, of your own produce, which I think is pretty dang cool. Um, yeah. And then... Um, so if you want to do the farmer's markets, I do price compare. Yes, it's going to be more expensive than your grocery stores, but I notice like they're so generous at the stands. Like they'll end up giving you a deal if you buy like a lot. Um, and especially if you like become a regular, they just like will throw things at you. There's like one place further south from us. Like they are so sweet and generous. And um, but I'm noticing that the quality is better. But when I was at the uh, stand this morning, I did ask how much their watermelons were, and they were $10 a watermelon. I was like, I don't care how good that watermelon is. I am not paying $10 for a watermelon. I don't care where it was grown. I don't care who grew it, that it used the top of the line, whatever. I don't care. I'm not paying $10 for a watermelon. So I was like, ugh. That ain't happening. So, and there are, okay, there are, how do you pick your watermelon? Put it in the chat right now because I've got to see this. My daughter, Shaylee, she is 12 years old. She is like the watermelon whisperer. She is so good at picking a watermelon. So I would look for like the bee stings, you know, the, the bottom, like they say, find a yellow spot. Um, and then I used to think like if it was hollow, it was a good one. No, Shaylee can tell by like, she's so funny. She'll go around, she'll start knocking on all the watermelon and she's like, it's gotta be dark green. And I'm like, really? I'm like, I would never go for the dark green ones. I have no idea, but she's so good at it. So she, I think she looks for ones are that are not hollow that don't sound hollow and then they have to be heavy she looks for that yes okay so dark dark lord he says yes heavy in size and dark green i i don't know where like i've gotten it all wrong 
I don't know, but but I learned this stuff online, but that's not the case. So yes, darker the better, um, heavy, heavier, but I still look for bee stings, but she just looks for heavy and dark green and that girl nails it. She picks the best watermelon all the time. So Shaylee gets to pick the watermelon and when she's not around when we pick one, we end up regretting it. The girl's amazing, so. Yep, Donna says a big yellow spot and webbing. Yes, the webbing. That was the other one, webbing. And um, it's, yeah, so, but I'm really bad at picking like uh, cantaloupe and honeydew. Okay, Dark Lord, is there like a system to cantaloupe and honeydew? I'm so bad at it. I know they say if you smell it, like if it smells ripe, like if you could smell it, then you're right there. Is that true? I don't know, but I have a hard time picking. Um, it seems like when I pick like the honeydew, they're still not quite ripe. They're hard. And then when I go grab the cantaloupe, it's mushy. So I still have a tough time when it comes to picking out those two. But yeah. But if you want a good watermelon, you have my daughter pick it out because she'll grab you a good one. It's phenomenal. She's so good at it. She's so good at it. Um, okay, so I have so many tips and I'm going to make videos on that. But I just want to share with you this book. I'll leave a link after this video. Uh, I found this on Amazon and I got it used. It's called Freeze Fresh. And it's preserving 55 fruits and vegetables, the ultimate guide for maximum flavor and versatility. And it's been so informal. Like there's a lot of things that I already knew, but like the information is so good. It's easy. It's like an easy book. So you can get all your summer produce and see how you can use it, what you can make. It has a few recipes, like how to freeze those beets, guys. Oh, but you know. I should really learn to like beets, but I just can't. Just simple techniques, just simple things that we could do um, to have um, our things stretch. So this, I'm really excited about this book. I've been, you can tell I already have it pegged and it's phenomenal. So this will help you if you want to get into freezing food. I do have a video down below on 40 foods that freeze well and another video on 20 foods that freeze well. And yes, there's dairy in there. And there's ways of using it. So I'm actually making a video right now on taking the frozen cottage cheese, the frozen cream cheese, and the frozen sour cream and showing you exactly what it looks like when it thaws and how you can't use it like normal afterwards and then putting it into certain recipes. So, but take advantage of all the summer produce, okay? And um, start experimenting with freezing, with canning, with dehydrating and if you have a freeze dryer freeze dry it and get in and try like last year we tried with grapes it didn't work we'll give it another try we'll figure out what went wrong and try to tweak it but you can preserve things these raspberries are from last year the jar is still sealed up and they're gorgeous this can last us a long time just like this so it's got to stay in a dry place where it, it won't you know get cold and create condensation because they're the berries and now we have raspberries from last year we could still snack on so um yeah definitely worth dehydrating or freeze drying for sure so let me know in the comments what you guys like to freeze um what do, are you looking forward to um this summer what do you love eating um I love all the good stuff. So let's, I'm going to di dive now into your comments and let's hang out and chat. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Oh, uh, I know. Thank you so much. She's like, I, she used to watch in the early days and you watch the kids grow up. I know. There's a time and a season for everything. And I have shared so much in my life. Um, there's a time and season for everything. Some things are going to be coming back, but not like you think they're coming back. So um, I definitely am looking into the podcast version of YouTube and, um, and sharing more there. Um, but there's things coming that 
will have the tone of what I used to do, but not just done a little differently. But I totally appreciate everyone that has been with She's in Her Apron from the start. But we've been going for, what, 11 years and uh, 12 years? I don't even know. Uh, and it's been such a ride and such a journey. And I just love sharing what I'm doing with you guys. And yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you all so, so much. Um, my butter and cheese. Yeah, Deborah, I love to freeze my butter and cheese. Amen, girl. I know I've got oodles of butter in my freezer and cheese. Um, it just, yeah, I mean, take advantage of it because it's not going to go bad. And I'm going to, I am actually working on a video right now on how long things will last because it's very interesting. Like even in this book where they're like, it'll last six months in your freezer. I'm like, Oh crap, that can last over a year or two. It's all about how you package it. You're fine. So there's things like even in your freezer that could go a little longer. Some things, no, I there was a lot I agreed with with her, but there was a lot that I was like, no, no, <laughs> you could go longer for sure. Oh, thank you, Jenny. She likes to watch me prepare and cook food. I, let me tell you, it has been a crazy couple of months with cooking food and prepping. Like I've got to get some more make ahead meals going because work life, I've got to figure out the balance now. I'm in this new phase of life and it is kicking my butt and I'm figuring it out. And I'm going to be sharing with you in a video that I'm working on right now because it's kicking my butt. It really is. <laughs> um, oh, Belinda. I don't know if you could hear Derek, but he said you can't joke about it until he has three I freezers. My three. my hubby jokes and says I freeze everything. All jokes aside, we are very thankful for a freezer. Yes, I'm like take advantage of the freezers if you can get your hands on a freezer, do it. It's the best investment. It's the best thing because as soon as like if you know you can't get to something fast enough, you pop it in the freezer. Ugh. But just make sure you like uh, freeze it good um, so it doesn't get freezer burnt, you know. But still, even freezer burnt things have been fine. So, oh, Micah, thank you. That's super sweet. I've been with you for six years now and I love your sweet spirit. Thank you. Some days I don't feel sweet. There's days where I'm like, I just need to go to bed. I really need sleep, guys. Like, it's bad. Ooh, Sarah, my son is learning how to make jelly and canned strawberries right now with his grandma. That's so great. And what fun memories. I hope you're like taking pictures of this moment. You're recording it. These are precious, precious moments um, to have. I lost footage of when my mom was out here when the kids were younger and we were making pasta together and I deleted that footage on accident. <laughs> Oh, I have pictures of it, but like the actual video, it's gone. I, I tried to recover it. It's gone. So sad. So I hope you're recording that. Those are awesome, sweet memories. Um, also depends on how you defrost it. They also give a lot of how long you can freeze it for. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely on how you thought there's ways yes there's ways of thawing things as well like right now our dinner um it was a freezer meal and i just marinated some chicken and i thawed it in just a cold bowl of water and it's ready to go so we actually need to start our smoker up um let's see here love to see you and derek fun around like before yeah it's always a good time over here someone's always Got something to say, saying it funny, mouthing off. You know, we joke a lot. Our kids are scarred beyond belief. <laughs> They're so used to our humor. It's bad. Derek and I are bad parents in that regard. We need to repent. <laughs> but we can't say our kids are sheltered, that's for sure. Oh my gosh. Um Let's see. Yes, 
Doreen, that's exactly what I'm doing with that video at the sour cream. Yep. Because it's like, it's one thing to say it, but that actually show you like, um, yeah, like freeze your creams, your heavy whipping creams. Like if you can't get it in time, like pop that in the freezer. You're half and half. Um, yes, I freeze whatever I can. Butter, cheese, lunch meats, bread, milk. Yes. Milk is one that I don't do. And I've been up front about this for years. I, it, that's a tough one for me. When it comes to milk, it's a tough one. I, I don't know what it, it's a mind game with me. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, lunch meat. I definitely freeze lunch meat. Um, I pulled out, um, we wanted to do a barbecue night and I didn't have to go buy uh, hot dogs. I had to go buy the buns um, because I had a whole big package of hot dogs in one of the freezers and I had um, a package of ham lunch meat. That was the last one though. So on my list for Sam's Club is lunch meat. And um, I didn't have to go buy lunch meat that week. I had it in my freezer. Uh, the hot dogs, didn't have to buy those. Um, we had cinnamon rolls that were already made and frozen. We had those this week. Um, gosh, I've done roast from the freezer. Like everything has, we pull from the freezer. Um, it's a rare thing to have like fresh meat. Like chicken, I buy all the time because we're pulling the frozen chicken out constantly. Um, but like we, we go in and buy, uh, our beef in bulk. And so when it comes to prices of like ground beef, I know what's a good deal or not, but when it comes to like steaks and roasts, I'm not, cause I don't track it and I really should. Um, but I don't, um, our whole cow, we figured it ended up being for the steaks and the roasts and the ground beef, everything after packaging, like the whole shebang, like 240 something a pound, like 248, I think, right? Does that sound right? So everything be was 248 a pound. So when I see the prices at the grocery store, I'm like, Ooh. so if you could find people, family members that you can get beef in bulk, highly suggest you do that. Like if you can find a rancher, Oh, that's right. Dark Lord. You do have a big family. I remember you from the last live. Yeah. Whatever we can get our hands on, on a sale. Yes. We freeze. That's so smart. I am looking forward to buying a food saver this week. Yay. Best investment. I'm telling you. In fact, I have bought from Costco their food saver bags. They work just as well um, as the name brand bags. So, and they're cheaper. So, go for it. Oh my gosh. How exciting. That is so great. Um, beetroot. Beets. <laughs> oh, Carol, thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you very much. Um, Okay, so Ellie says she knocks on melons and listens to the sound they make and if they tell you about their insides. Do you do that with cantaloupe and honeydew, though? Like, oh, I'm so bad at those two. Um, smell on cantaloupe and push the spot it came off the vine for the softness. Interesting. Okay, thank you, Micah. Thank you. I know I'm so bad at cantaloupe and I love when you get like the perfect cantaloupe. I hate when it's like not quite there yet. Oh, Donna said the same thing. Hello, Donna. If you press on the part where the stem was, it's supposed to have some give. Okay. Now, isn't that kind of like the same thing with pineapple? You pull the greens up. If it comes out easy, it's ready to go. But there was something about the bottom of a pineapple. I can't remember. Um, 
thumb and smell it, thumb and smell it. I know I just smell them. I, I that's how I go off of it is I just smell them. Um, honeydew is good. There's one. Have you guys tried the, what is the one that the farmer stands will bring out Derek? I know the grocery stores have started selling it. It's the cross between the cantaloupe and the honeydew, like a crow. crow. Oh man. I hear it in my head, but I can't say it. Oh, it's a weird, like, cr Crenshaw? Did, that sounds, is it a Crenshaw? Something like that. Those are good. Oh, and then the plums mixed with the nectarine, Pluto? Plu oh, what is it called? Plum and a nectarine. Starts with a P. Those are good too. Those are very good. Well, good morning, Australia. Oh my goodness. Um, the best watermelon so far this year, I got at Walmart pickup. I couldn't believe it. That's awesome. That's so good. How much did you pay for your watermelon? I noticed that at the stores, they're like, pretty much like $5 a watermelon. So when the stand over here was asking 10, I'm all, no, no. I broke down and bought cherries for three sixty-seven a pound today. You know, when you want them, they, you know, three, even three sixty-seven. I mean, it's not good, but it's not bad either because even when cherries, when they put them on sale, they're not like super cheap, at least not in our neck of the woods. So, um, they'll get down to the twos, but if this ad if said three, I, I think I would have thought about it because when I go to the store tomorrow, if they look good, I would have bought them if they were three something, but the price that Smith was saying, what, four ninety nine? Yeah, no, I'll be walking by them, but I love cherries. Oh my gosh. Okay. He says the paper bag thing for mushrooms is because it's dark and musty the way mushrooms like it. All right. So if they keep growing slowly instead of dying and rotting, there it is. That's why they do so good in the brown paper bag. I buy one bunch of green onions in the spring and plant. Won't buy again till November. Very good. Do you know? Okay. So Derek and I were at Costco and we saw the greenhouse that they have for sale there. Um, I saw it online and I sent a, um, a screenshot to the family and I'm like, what do you guys think of this greenhouse? Because this looks pretty dang cool. Um, so we're really tempted to get that greenhouse. Like we're, we're tempted for sure. Um, is Boston out with friends? Cause his phone's at 10%. I just got alerted. Sure, he's at the mall. He's at the mall. Okay. Um, okay. Jennifer says I started putting my lettuce in jars after you made the video about the electric Mason jar vacuum sealer. Yes. I will link that after this video. Uh, I've done this with my strawberries also. It's great, right? It works so good. I mean, you can have these things like even your raspberries last longer in the fridge um that way it's so good um i'm growing more produce this year we went from hydroponically growing a salad to using a vertical container garden that is awesome very good we our garden is going um i haven't been out there to look have you derek do you know if things are our garden last year was like mm, not this year guys i'm just not going to yeah tomatoes peppers onions um yeah we got to keep the bugs away um and the chickens yeah i mean they're fenced off but we do like to have them like they have a good area our chickens have a good area of roaming of the yard um we gave them like they started off in like one little small area. Then we lengthened their thing all the way to the end of the property. Um, but there's days where we'll have them come out onto the lawn. Um, 
but with the garden, it's like you have to kind of keep an eye on them. Yeah, we do need to finish fencing the garden because they're like, oh, what's up over here? And it's like, no, 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 no. But we love having the chickens come out into the yard um, and clean up the yard. Um, let's see here. So many great comments. Okay, so Finding Home says, for bandanas, you could put them in the refrigerator, the outside, put them in the refrigerator, the outside she will turn brown and ripen, but the inside fruit will stop ripening. Aha, uh -huh. it'll give you a few extra days. Okay, well, with these bad boys behind me, let's put them in the refrigerator. Done. Done, done. Oh, guys, I got a new apron. Let me show you. I was in Walmart the other night, and I walked by it. I swear, they're stepping up their game when it comes to the aprons. I'm like, Walmart. So this is the, what I like. No ties. No ties. Look at that. Oh. So it's gray, but it also kind of looks blue. But I bet it's a gray. But it looks blue. I don't know. Oh, on video, it kind of looks bluish green. Um, but it was just so cute. I couldn't help myself. I think it was like 12 or $13. Couldn't help myself. So, oh. man, do you know how many of these like plastic things they put on this apron? My gosh, look at this, look at the bottom. Isn't that cute? And then the top has these little flowers. This is so cute. It's big though. I'm going to have to pull the top up a little more. But yeah. But it's so pretty. But the bummer part is it doesn't have pockets. I noticed that when I got home. There's no pockets. That's the bummer part. My aprons have to have pockets. And this doesn't. And if I was a sewer, I could put pockets on there. But guess what? No. Not a sewer. Not a sewer. But this was cute. But, yeah. I wish it had pockets. <laughs> Just add some. I know. I'm not a sewer. i got to figure that one out. Um, but it's cute. And I got it at Walmart. They had some cute ones there. Um, yeah. I haven't, I mean, besides the other aprons that I've, I showed you on the other live, those have been like the aprons that I haven't, I haven't since, gosh, I would say December was the last time I bought an apron since before those times. Um, so hello, Timor from Tennessee. Derek and I were just talking about Tennessee the other day. We want to go back for the fried chicken. <laughs> that was the best fried chicken I've ever had. Was from the Loveless Cafe. Ooh, it was good. I love fried chicken. Um, plus, none of those gnats will come with the bananas if you stick them in the refrigerator. Yes. Oh, those gnats. Those nasty gnats. Oh, gosh. What's my apron count now? <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. Derek, you feel like counting? Enough to pull the hooks off the wall. Yeah, I've I've crashed the one behind the pantry door. Honey, we would you mind counting? Because now she's got me all like curious. I that's a good question. I and I have gone through my aprons and I have tossed a lot. Like I'll, I have donated some, some just were dead and yeah. Okay. So one, okay. You count over there. I'll count quietly. So I don't interrupt your count. Derek. Mess you up. No, don't mess me up. Okay. Two, four. No, shh, 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 shh. count quietly. Six. I'm serious. You have, you know, I'll start over like a million times. Two, three. <laughs> I 
I know what's on that one. Okay, we're just waiting for Mr. Toodles to keep counting over there. He's still counting. How many did you get? Over here, I have 16. Okay, add 40. <laughs> we got 56 aprons, dear. I have 56 aprons. And you use all of them. I do use all of them. Okay, but I swear at one point I had 70. I swear at one point I did. So, yes. I have. Well, that's... No, I don't have any in the wash. Do I? You counted the one in the wash? Okay, so 56. Oh, unless I have some in my bedroom. I could be close to 60. The bedroom might have one or two. But around 56 aprons. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. Listen, I, I went to Neater's last week. With my sweet friend, you all know her. I'm sure you know her, Julie Pacheco. She's a doll. And we were at Neater's having lunch. And I walked by the aprons twice. I didn't even stop to look. I didn't even browse. I didn't peruse them. I just saw them and my heart pitter-pattered. And then I went, nope. And I looked away. And I didn't even... Because I'm like, if I... If I go comb through those aprons and I found one that I really liked, it'd be, oh, I'd literally be doing like this there. I'd be like, oh, should I, should I, should I? I can't help it when it's pretty. I can't help it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. But I use them and then um, I do go through decluttering moments and then I'll, I do. I do give a lot away and I'll donate them. Um, there's only probably been like a handful that I've actually thrown away. Um, but other than that, I, I'll donate them. I'll give them away. We should do a quilting party. You know how many quilts we can make with your aprons? <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. But a lot of them were gifts too. And so I hold on to those, you know? Yeah, no matter what, you need an apron to save your clothes. It's so true. Like, and I'm a messy cook, like bad guys. And I wipe my hands on my, like, I use my aprons. So that pretty apron, it's not going to stay pretty because I use them. So. About three of those aprons are mine. Yeah. Yeah, you've got your aprons. So you're, you're coming at 50, you're like 47. Or yeah. Like yeah, what's the one grilling apron you have? Like, I'm never going to wear that. So, like, my grill's hotter than yours or something like that. I'm not going to wear that. <laughs> I might have an apron problem. I might. I know. I love them. I absolutely love them. How many different style aprons you have? I have different style aprons for sure. Maybe we'll do a special live and uh, we can uh, catwalk all your aprons. <laughs> we should we catwalk? That would be fun. That would be fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, he even, said, he even said it. No, wait, are you counting the ones in laundry too? Yeah. I know. I'm like, I just threw a load in and yeah, there was one. Um, yes, that is a lot of aprons. <laughs> I have one and I've been, that you've been wearing for 30 plus years. That's awesome. In there, Derek was the original apron that I bought at Target that started the whole thing. Like I've always known I like aprons, but I finally like bought my own apron. Um, I got it from Target forever ago and it was the first apron um, I wore on she's in her apron and I still have it. Like I'm never getting rid of that one. It started this whole crazy journey for me. And so 
Yeah. A mixture of, from Jamie, a mixture of Dawn dish soap, apple cider vinegar, and about a teaspoon of soap and a tablespoon of vinegar put in a small glass on the counter. Yes, so keep those bugs away. I agree. That is a good, good combination for sure. Um, I'm a novice. I only have eight. Eight is a good number. Three is great. Two is great. Fifty-six. Yeah, I might have a problem. You could glue the pockets onto the <laughs> on with stitch witch oh my gosh jenny's a quilter that's awesome i'm impressed thank you stacy appreciate that um <laughs> so fun aprons are so fun they're so motivating um my first apron off oh, from julie Belong to my great grandmother. I will never get rid of it. I right? No way. I I have my grandmother's house coats. I have two of her house coats in my closet that I will never get rid of. No, she wore her house coats. So that was like her apron. You know, I'll never get rid of them. Um. Oh, what a good idea! Please have a heart to heart conversation someday with memories and the love of. And the love of probably your subscribers for you. Oh, that's sweet. I like, seriously, guys, like I don't take, you know, for granted YouTube and you all like, seriously, a lot of you have been with me for basically from the start and we so appreciate it. Like she's in her apron has been such a blessing. Like I love sharing, you know, what I'm learning and I love getting the advice back from you guys and the love and support. A lot of those aprons have been gifts from you guys. When I had my PO box, like they mean so much, like honestly, so, so much. Um, yeah. Oh, Micah has 25 aprons. That's a good collection. Dang. Uh, I've recently bought my first apron in Mexico. I want more. Now I'm obsessed. I know it is addicting. I have said this over the years, like it's really addicting, like, th cause they're motivating and they're pretty. And I don't know what it is about like putting it on. And I just feel like I can get stuff done. I don't know. It's so motivating. All right. Here's a question, Derek. You can help answer from Cindy. Are chickens really worth the work? They were when the eggs went through the roof. Yeah, they were when the eggs went through the roof, for sure. And she says, Mr. Toodles, buy that girl a new freezer. No. Yes. It's going to happen. I'm going to come home with one. Like, it's going to have to do a little. Um, yeah, is it, are the chickens worth it? Um... Like I'm, we're always buying like the, not the straw, but whatever that stuff is they'll, to make their. They'll, they'll be more worth it as we start, if we start making our own feed. Yeah. yeah. Feed is, feed does cost. So during, during the shortage and when the price hike went up, they were totally worth it. Yeah. I still think it's worth it. I think it's good to learn to well, be self-sufficient and, Next you know, year they'll feel them will fill our freezer with meat. Because <laughs> they'll stop laying eggs. <laughs> oh, I know that's part of life, but I don't know. As long as he doesn't tell me that's the chicken from the coop. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, but man, chickens can be mean. We've had to separate chickens. Like, they could be so mean to each other. Uh, like that whole phrase pecking order. Yeah, that is the truth. Like, they could be. Like uh, we had to put an apron, a chicken apron on one of the chickens because they kept picking like and picking on this one and her back was like bleeding. I'm like, you guys are mean. Like, holy cow. Yeah. Chickens can be mean. Um, when no one is over, I'll put on an old crummy t-shirt over my top to keep my clothes clean. Yep. I know I'm so bad. Like my shirts will get stains and 
I know. Like, I swore there was a stain on this t-shirt, but no, I thought there was. I'm bad. Like, stains on clothes. Oh, I'm, I know there's a stain on my jean. Oh, no, maybe that was a watermark. It's gone now. I thought there was a stain. Yes. Oh, there's blood on my knee right here. I nicked myself shaving and I got blood on my knee. I love these jeans, you guys. And the hole is getting bigger. Look at that. You know, you've got those jeans that you love. It's because I sit Indian style and it, it made the hole bigger. But I'm going to keep going. It's like, uh, I always sit Indian style. That's something about me, you guys. Like, I did see a chair that uh, on TikTok or Instagram, I saved it, where you can sit Indian style. So if you love to sit Indian style, the way, and it, but they promoted it for ADHDers. Like, do you understand that concept? A chair for someone with ADHD, Derek? Like, I don't know. But they say it's perfect with people with ADHD. I'm like, what does that have to do with it? Does it, it spin? It spins, but, like, I don't like spinning. I have ADHD, and I hate spinning. But you're able to sit um, with your legs crossed. And I I'm constantly sitting with my legs crossed, you guys. It's so bad. Derek would be like, um, your toes are purple. And I'm like, whoops. But um, yeah, I, I swear it was Instagram. And I think I put it under, like I saved it under a category of I want. <laughs> That's so humble. But I was like, I need to remember this chair. I always forget how you could find your folders. Okay, let's see if I could show it to you because it's the coolest chair and I want to try it, but I bet it's super expensive. Like I really want to try it because if I could, the way that it looks, I'll show you. I just think, oh, this might be really comfy for me to work with because I, I do long hours at my computer, especially right now. Um, where is it? But you're able to sit with your legs crossed, kind of hanging down. I don't know. It's it's kind of weird to say, but I definitely, oh, I have a folder in here that says, hell no. Like, hell no. How funny. Like, I don't, I don't even remember how I label half these folders. That's ADHD for you. Um, okay. Amazon. Here it is. Yeah, home office for ADHDers. I don't understand. Look at this. What? Look at that. I need that. I need that. That I need. I need that in my life. I need to look. I need to figure out how much that is. I want that. I'll put that on my please, Mr. Toodles for um, Christmas. We do have an anniversary coming up, but we're going on a trip together. So it's like, eh, we'll save it for Christmas. But I, I, I wanna see how much it is. If you guys could look it up for me, like, and let me know if you could find it on the live, that would be like fantastic. Um, it doesn't say, Oh, it's a meditation chair. Are you guys screaming that in the comments? It's a meditation chair. Interesting. But I I would definitely like to try it because I think um, my body would benefit from it because I'm constantly sitting Indian style. Right now I'm sitting on a stool and it's not comfy. But um, my kids have bouncing ball chairs. Um, yeah, the... We got those little, it's not a ball though. It's you inflate it, but it, it's kind of flat. It doesn't go to a ball ball, but an disc. yeah, an inflatable disc. And they can like kind of wobble a little bit on it. Um, yeah, those, those work really good for ADHD, autism, and anxiety. Yeah. I have two of them. That's fantastic. Um, let's see here. I've started YouTube by viewing your vlogs. Trust me. 
and you're just like my real sister. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Do tell I work from home desk all day. I know I, I've seen so many cool chairs um, lately, but that one, just because I can sit th the way that I sit weird at my desk, like it's bad. You guys, I do sit Indian style, like a lot. My legs are crossed like that all the time. I'm comfy that way. And I, I think, gosh, what am I going to end up doing to my hips when I'm older? Like, am I going to have an issue when I'm old? I don't know, but I like sitting that way. Um, rather have a bouncing ball chair than a meditation chair. Yeah, I can't do that. I can't. Like, I can't stand sitting in a chair that spins. Like, no, I, no, I, I can't rock. Um, I used to love to swing when I was a kid. Like, I could swing on the swing set all day long, but now as an adult, my barf, I can't rock in a rocking chair. It depends on the type of chair, but like if Derek and I are sitting on the front porch rockers and he starts rocking, I like brace it and put my feet down. Like don't rock. I don't know. I, I just, bleh. I need like drama mean. Yeah, I can't do it. Okay. Rebecca, excuse me. Is a freeze dryer worth the money? I say yes. My friend Tara, who's actually rudely went live when I went live. I know I texted her earlier. I'm like, what the crap? Um, she says no, but I don't agree with Tara half the time. Um, I think they're worth the money. They've been worth the money for us. You, um, yeah, it depends on how much you use them. And, um, to me, the, the electricity is no different than a freezer, than an oven. Like people will be like, oh, the amount of electricity. No, no. Um, we think it's worth the money because I look at what I buy from like Thrive Market and things like that. And it's cheaper for me to freeze dry my own than going and buying um, the, the, the freeze dried food, the dehydrated food. Uh, I save so much more money. Um, like I'll show you, there's a container right here. Okay. So this is green peppers. Now, now when the, all this produce is like at its peak here, you know, in the summer right now. Um, and I could buy it, chop it up, throw it in the freeze dryer or dehydrator. But for the freeze dryer, since you're asking, uh, mm, that is a green pepper. That's green pepper. Um, the price that I'm getting my food at and bringing it home. So I'm watching the sales, right? I'm watching prices and I can get them for, 69 cents each for a green pepper. Or if I go to Alpine um, and get them in bulk, right? Come home, do the process, freeze dry them. I've got the freeze dryer bags, like tons of them. I've got, you know, you think of how much, if you're buying things to put them in, like on Amazon, you're buying all that in bulk. It's cheaper than me going on and going on to Thrive Life or and I love Thrive Life. I'm not knocking them. I have an affiliate code with them. I think their their quality is so good. Like you just saw me snacking on the green peppers. Their quality is so good. Um, they do an excellent job. Like this is the celery. They do an excellent, excellent job. Love them. But the amount of money that one can of something is versus doing it myself, it outweighs it like completely. Like the machine is worth it in my opinion. Um, because, okay, if you add up what I've bought in the last, mm, let's say you, gosh, I bet if I got on my account right now, it'll tell me how much I have spent with them or Agus and Farms. Um, and 
I could have bought my machine. I could have bought my machine like earlier. So I think they're worth the money if you use it and do it correctly and like yeah. really take advantage of it. Good time saving and stuff. Yeah, and it's time saving. Um, you could take shortcuts instead of like canning things. You could just freeze dry it and then just bag it up. Like the process after you hurry and get it out, it's of the machine because you got to hurry and work with it um, and get them sealed up. It's so worth it. I think they're worth it. I have a link in the description for a Harvest Right uh, freeze dryer. I think they're worth it. Now, if it's something you're going to hardly do, then yeah, no, it's not going to be. But this is the perfect time to take advantage of all this is that's coming out of the gardens for the summer and everything that's in season. I think it's worth the money and the investment, especially if you want to build up your long-term food storage and your short-term food storage. Like these cans are opened. Like we, uh, I made Dorito taco salad, like, I don't know, two weeks ago and I was out of fresh tomatoes. So we cracked open a can or of the freeze dried tomatoes. And yes, it's not like a fresh tomato, but we threw it in. Like we hydrated them. They taste the same. We threw it in the salad. It was great. So I still had my tomato like taste. The texture wasn't, you know, but it was great. It's it tasted just like a tomato and it was in my salad. And um I think it's worth the investment for sure. Um and they always are running a, a bargain. Um, I'm not sure what it is right now. Um, but they're always running a good deal. Um, yeah, like Derek said, it's an investment, but, um, if you think you're going to use it, go for it. Um, but they're always running deals for like $5 off a machine, $300 off a machine. Um, and I'll start promoting those more. I'm such a bad, like affiliate. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and I'll start like when they're doing those deals, I'll start announcing them on my social media and on YouTube for you guys. So you can see, um, right now, oh, right now they have entered to win a freeze dryer. So go on to their site. Um, my link is down below. Click on it. You can win yourself a freeze dryer. That'd be awesome. That could be you. That could be you. So, um, and I get asked a lot, like, should I go for the medium or large? Um, yeah, we kind of wish we went for the large. But, but it takes a lot. The medium's, yeah. medium's been better for us. Yeah, the medium has been good. Um, like I said, it's just how much you're going to do. But we really love it. And we have a dehydrator, but... I can get more years out of freeze drying and then, but dehydrating, it's its own process. It's its own different thing, but a dehydrator kind of cooks the food too, a little bit. So it's preference. It's aces. I mean, yeah, one has moisture. One doesn't. Um, but I like, we love it. We love the freeze dryer. You guys, I think it's worth the investment. I really do. Because I think about all the money that I threw at my um, Thrive Life. Yeah, I say go for it. Um, what size? Yeah, medium. Medium's working great for us. And sometimes we're like, oh, it could probably well, not go faster. It really depends on the moisture in the air. Um, you need to do more with it. Yeah. I mean, we have family and stuff that wants to do it. For backup line and using it, but yeah, that would be good for that. But just for us, the medium's work fine, medium's good. Um, investment wise, like getting another freezer, Cheryl says, yeah, it's worth the investment. <laughs> See, soon. Um, it's 5 a.m., have to sleep. Oh my goodness, you're on the other side of the world. Yeah, how's tomorrow? Yeah, how's tomorrow? You're in the future. I always say that to my son who's across the world. I'm like, how's the future? What's going on? Gosh, right now it's what? Two in the morning where he's at. Um,
Oh, for the cantaloupe, the more yellow near their stem, it's sweeter. Good to know. My hair looks lovely. Well, thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you. Um, it's 5 a.m. here. Oh, my gosh. 240 on Amazon. Okay, the, um, you guys are showing me the uh, 240 on Amazon from Micah. Create with V says Amazon, they go up to almost 400. Ugh. Are we talking about the chair? Don't say that about the chair. Is it the chair? Um, yeah, the chair. Oh, I don't want to pay $400 for a chair so I could sit with my legs crossed. Dang. Okay, we're going to have to just like keep an eye on the price of the chair because that could be my Christmas gift. Business expense. Ah, we could write it off as a business expense. You're correct. But you still have to have the money to spot it. That's so funny. Uh, it reminds me of um, Schitt's Creek by David. It's a write-off. But who writes it off? He's like, I don't know. It's a write-off. <laughs> that cracks me up every time. It cracks me up. I could use it as a business expense. I'll have to look into it. It really intrigues me. Like, you guys, I just, I sit that way. Like, no joke all the time. All the time. All right, guys. All right. We have been on for an hour and a half. Oh, my gosh. Um, I do want to go live. Um, oh, wait a minute. My husband got me my first apron this Mother's Day. What a guy. That's awesome. It's motivating, huh? Um, I really would love to go live during the day. Um, like I would love to go live with like routines and things. I just need someone to like monitor the chats. Um, that's the only thing. Um, cause I'm always like Derek, what? Cause I would love to say I'm going to go live on these nights on this day every week, you know, but we have to go with our schedule and if, Derek's around to help me. Um, but I would really love to go live during the day. I know I noticed that with my audience, it's a lot of working moms. And so the evenings are good, but I would love to like in the day go live as well. Um, that would be fun. So I do, I would like to do that. Um, it's just, I, I'd like to do some more live content. It's just easier right now with how crazy my schedule is and working on these projects that are literally sucking my soul, but it's like good, but it's taking up all my time. That's like, I've hardly posted this month. It's just been like, I'm trying to get these things um, done, you know, uh, and, and it's hard to create the content and get it all out and, and work on these fun projects that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And they're never going to get done if I don't work on them. But like, I love talking with you guys live. So I would love to go live more. So I love to, to do that during the day. Cause like, I would love to like start talking again and, and with you guys more about routines. Um, do you guys have your planner for the summer? This goes through May through August. This is the semester planner, weekly planner. So, um, meal plan budget freezer inventory, um, shopping your shelves, menu plan, do that all in there. If you guys like a weekly spread, the spread in here is amazing because it's my brain. So it's so motivating. If you haven't gotten your planner yet, um, the link is below and Derek's going to link the planner as well. Um, we are working on the 2024 planners right now and the Covers are going to look different. There's not going to be as many cover choices this coming year. We're just noticing with all the choices that we have, because we have to make so many up front, what's, what's selling. So there'll be not as many cover choices this coming year. Um, and, but they're the ones that we're working on right now, they're really pretty. So I'm excited to bring that to you. And we're working on the menu planner, the cookbook, a couple of other fun things I'm not going to say yet, but I'm really excited to bring to you to help you with your meal planning. So super excited. Um, 
So yeah. Um, but yeah, you can grab your ugh, bunk. If you, we still have the yearly planners on sale, right? Um, yeah, I mean, you guys can still get your hands on a yearly planner. Um, at a, uh, they're on sale. I can't remember how much they're for. If you want to test them out, but guys, just go and grab the semester planner from May to August. And then you can start the holiday season in a fresh planner from September to December. Christmas is in there. Uh, Thanksgiving is in there. We are adding in the 2024 planners uh, for Christmas uh, another menu in there because it was just like one menu um, and shopping lists and things for like like your Christmas day dinner. We're putting Christmas Eve dinner in there as well. So we're adding another menu in the Christmas section. So yay. Um, uh, so that will be in there for you. So, so you could start planning and get into routines. Um, yeah. So I will be coming back with, you know, the routine videos as well. I just had to take like a break from certain things in my life and sharing and just focus on one area. And, um, yeah, I feel like I'm in a good like headspace now to bring some things back into the videos. Um, like I said, there's a time and season for everything. Um, oh, thank you. She said that she could moderate. That's awesome. Thank you. I, <laughs> yes, I am pro first amendment. It's just all like the, um, the pervs, <laughs> perverts makes me think of, um, Ferris Bueller. Waste toys, dweebies. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. All those people. Um, uh, oh, you like the planner. I'm so glad, Micah. I'm so glad you like it. I, I love it. I, oh, yeah. The planner is so good. And all those fun stickers fit in it. Because sometimes it's motivating to use the stickers. Um, Okay, will planners be available for the international viewers? <sighs> yeah, we've we've had a lot of issues with delivering outside of the US. Um 2023s we didn't, but I we're we've been talking about it and we might give international uh, another shot for 2024. I don't know if it's going to be open up to the whole globe, but um, definitely our, our high traffic areas. So yeah, we've been really been talking about it. And if we can tweak some things, I think we're going to. So I know it like disappointed a lot of people. And I'm like, oh, man, I know, I know. We didn't real. oh man, things that we have been learning in this whole process has been fun and interesting and likely yowza, yowza. Um, what was the question? Vicky. Okay. I need a functional planner, especially for planning the holidays. Which of your planners would you recommend? You, you'll go with the weekly planner. Um, we have a daily planner. Um, but it's the weekly and now you can get it in a yearly or in semesters. So right now you can get May through August. Um, there's no holiday section in this one. Um, yeah, the next one, September through December, you'll have, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas in there. Um, I should have added, it's still not too late for the 2024. So we haven't finalized them. I could add one for July in there, but not everyone. I've got an idea. Maybe I could put it at the end, but see, I'm also working on a menu planner that has some amazing bells and whistles. So I don't want to add too much to this because like, seriously, the menu planner is like, yeah, heads up. But, um, this is great for the holidays because, um, in the, November and December section, we have things like Christmas goes into more detail than, of course, Thanksgiving and Easter does. But the planner has um, like 
it has a dual calendar. Like this is the second dual calendar that goes by weeks. So you could track anything in there. Like this is the normal planner here. Um, and then there's sections in there that if you want to divide out, like we have a budget section, shop your shelves, menu planning, lots of note paper, a master to-do list, and then a section that you could take your master to-do list and break it down. Just super simple. So we have sections like that that you could use for the holidays in planning. And like this weekly spread, I I mean, of course, I'm biased. This is my brain and this is what I love. But um, I love the the weekly spread. So the, you want the weekly planner, not the daily, the weekly. There's also one, but it's not like I think we'll just need to take it off the website. It's the weekly date book. It's not that one. OK. It, it's this without all the bells and whistles. It doesn't have the, the party planning and things like that. So you'll want the weekly planner. Yeah, Derek put a link for it. Um, but every, I'm loving the response. And if you have the planner and haven't left a review, please leave one. But when you go to hit the star, make sure you're starring how much you like it because we're getting one star reviews, but the comment with it is, I love this planner. It's like, great, but you gave it one star, not realizing you gave it one star. So, um, so yes, if you can leave a review, um, but if you love the planner, make sure you're not leaving a one star, but star it, you know, appropriately. Cause Derek's like, oh man, they love the planner, but they didn't realize they didn't click on the stars. I'm like, ouch. So. Yeah, we would really greatly appreciate it. So, okay. Um, yes, we don't have a digital format. Yeah, we don't have a digital format. We've thought of that. We have a PDF download. Yes, but we do have a PDF download. Derek's right. You can purchase the PDF download and print it at home. Um, so that is available right now. You can go snag that. Um, you love the cover. Yeah, this one's a fun one. This one is called Fruity. And you can grab this one for either two planners to finish out 2023. So, yep, this, this one is fruity. Um, all right, you guys, well, we have been on for almost two hours. I love it. Let's see, will you be collaborating with Melinda from In the Leafy Tree Tops again? They are our manufacturer. So um, we did a collaboration in 2021 where we had the feel of her planner mixed in with my planner. And so now they're our, our manufacturer. Melinda is the best. And we're working on some really fun projects for you guys. I can't wait. I can't wait. Like the things that I gravitate to and want and use, I created my own version. And she's just been a darling. Like her creativity, like she's able to see what's in my brain. She'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Cause like I'm not a drawer, I'm not like an artist. Um, I just know what I like. And sometimes I know, I don't know until I see it. And she has, she, she gets my taste. She's so good. She nails things like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? Yeah. they the paper is like butter. The paper is the best. It's so smooth, but nothing smears when you write on it. I love it. Anyway. What's a planner? I plan things and then, and go poof. <sighs> Wait, where did I do this comment? I plan things and they go poof in this house. Hold. Yeah. No, seriously. I know. And that's life. You know, I, I know. I, I plan things out and then they don't happen and it gets my anxiety like, what? I know. All right, guys. I appreciate you so much. Uh, I hope this got you excited about the produce for the summer and get things in your freezer so you can stock your shelves and make meals. And, and what I love about this time of year is like your dinners don't have to be so heavy. Like, uh, Derek started the smoker. We're going to throw that chicken on. I'm going to run and hopefully that stands still open, um, and grab some corn. If not, oh, well, um, we have half of a watermelon in our refrigerator. We have the strawberries. Um, I have broccoli in the refrigerator. Like I love just those, like, light nights where it's just like an array of fruits and vegetables and like, you know, it just, yeah, I love summer cooking. It's breezy. It's easy. I love it. So, um, and I'm hungry. So 
I, I'm, I gotta go eat. I'm hungry. So we're going to get this chicken on the smoker. So thank you for joining me. And, uh, yeah, come back to this video and leave comments of like the prices of what you're seeing on the cherries and the fruits and the veggies in your area. Um, you could say, you know, what state you're from, what country you're from and leave the prices because I think it, it's so interesting to see what everyone's paying and what, and what you think is a deal or not a deal. So put that in the comment too later on. So I'm going shopping tomorrow and uh, hitting Sam's Club and Smith's. And of course, I'm going to film it and take you guys along with me. So catch the future grocery hauls because uh, also comment if you liked that last video where I actually sat and went through the ads with you. If you want to, because I'm going to film it tonight, like with me looking in the ads, um, if that's something you want to continue um, doing, like with me, like in the ads, showing you what the prices are here, let me know because I think it's so cool to get a glimpse of like what everyone is doing. I, we're going to be in the Carolinas this summer um, and I can't wait to see what their prices are and the stores there. So, and there's so many grocery stores out there. I'm going to Aldi's. I'm going to Aldi's. So dang, I wish we had an Aldi's. Dang it. So I'm excited to go there and see like what the prices are and, and compare it to Utah. So yay. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, have a good night and I will see you soon. There'll be a video hopefully by the end of the week. So just be patient with me. The videos will be coming. Um, just working on fun things for you all. All right, thanks for joining me. We'll see you soon. Bye.